everyone. Welcome back to Actual English, everyone. It is a brand new week, and thanks for joining us. My name is Jennifer Clyde. It is time for lesson sixty-one, and let's begin a brand new category. Okay, hope you're not having the Monday blues. Now, today's topic is your pets and your personality. Of course, simple. You can talk about people's personalities, but let's try to link your pets and your personality together. So, if you do have a pet, let's say perhaps the most common pet would be dogs and cats. You can have a snake or a turtle or fish or birds at home.、Uh, maybe not their personalities, but definitely cats' personalities, even dogs' personalities can be similar to their owners. So, if you do own a pet, do you think that your personality and your pet's personalities are very similar? If they are similar. In what ways are you similar? Let's talk about that today. Let's begin. Rachel, do you believe that pets take after their owners, or owners take after their pets? <laughs> I think it goes both ways. I think so.、Right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah.、Um, my good family friend—they have a dog, and her dog is just like their family members. Really? Yeah, like、just、she's like another child. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely see the dog. Her dog's name is Daisy, and、right. she is definitely like another child.、Wow. Her, she has such a sweet demeanor, and she's very obedient as well. <laughs> yeah, not that saying that the family is like super <laughs> obedient, but you can tell that、um, the family has a lot of good values, and they're very respectable. And the dog is just like that. You can see that in the dog. You can see that in the dog. That's amazing.、Yeah. I guess because they spend like all day with one another. Yeah. The personality traits they kind of rub off on each exactly. other. Exactly, and I think that personality can be very contagious as well. Sure. You know, like with the, when you're with your friends,、uh, you end up kind of being very similar, and I think it's the same thing with pets and with families. Yeah, but I wonder, like you said, it probably works both ways. So do some dog traits rub off onto humans? Like I don't know, are they. Perhaps running around on all fours and barking. <laughs> maybe, maybe not that far. Maybe not that far, but I'm pretty sure it works both ways too. Sure, there's got to be some part of that character of the dog that rubs off on humans. Like maybe they're they're really、uh, clingy and warm to each other. So、yeah. maybe the people become like that as well. Right. I think it's the question of what came first, like the rooster or the egg, <laughs> or the chicken or the egg, right? And I think、sure. it's the same thing.、Yeah. I'm pretty sure、um, that companionship is beneficial to both. Yeah. Where the personalities rub off on both ends. Sure, and I think sometimes the personality of the pet and the family maybe doesn't match up, and that's where you get like a bad relationship, and maybe they get rid of the pet or something、yeah. like that. I think you've got to find the the right character as well. I agree. Not just the right breed or the right animal.、Right? Yeah, exactly. Which shows that pets, dogs, cats, they're very human-like as well. You know、sure. that they have those different personalities. Um, where people can relate to, and、yeah. like you said, that's why you have to choose the right dog or right pet that matches you and your family. Sure. Yeah. So, are you looking for a dog? No way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, welcome back, everyone. As you were listening to today's actual talk, did you take a moment to think about you and your pet? I hope you did. Now, Rachel did mention that she once had a friend that had a dog named Daisy, right? And she said that Daisy、uh, was very similar with the whole family in certain ways. So let's check out what she mentioned in today's conversation. So here we go. Peter says, Rachel. Do you believe that pets take after their owners, or vice versa, or owners take after their pets? Okay, so he's basically asking a very simple question, but he's saying, "Do you think it's A or B?" Okay, now to take after means to resemble, be very similar to. So he's saying, do you believe that pets are very similar with their owners, or owners they take after? Meaning, do you think that owners become more like their pets, or do you think that pets become like their owners? Now, what did Rachel say? She said, I think it goes both ways. Go both ways. Hmm. It means it works both ways. It can be A and it can be B as well. 
See, she's saying, well, I think it's both. I think it goes both ways. Now, she says, a good family friend, okay, a family friend, a friend of the family, they have a dog. And her dog is just like their family members, just like. If you say that he or she is just like something or somebody, you are saying that uh, they resemble someone appearance-wise, or it can also mean that they have the same personality, the same traits, characteristics. They resemble each other. They are almost the same, or exactly the same in some cases too. So let's simplify the sentence. A good family friend they have a dog, and the dog is just like their family members, meaning the dog and the family members are very much alike, okay? Now he says, really, like another child, right? Because children take after their parents in many cases, right? Okay, they become very much like parents uh, personality-wise. So she says, well, her dog's name is Daisy, okay? So let's talk about Daisy. And she is definitely like another child. So this can mean that uh, the dog is very much like the family members personality-wise, not looks-wise, right, but personality-wise. Or this sentence could also mean that they are very, very tight, very close, okay? She has such a sweet, a very caring demeanor. Okay, demeanor is pretty much attitude, poise. It can also mean appearance, but it means an attitude, okay? So, she has such a sweet demeanor. She has such a sweet presence, an attitude or personality, and she is very obedient. We'll take a look at that vocab word later on as well. If you say that somebody is obedient, they are obeying. They're very respectful. They're faithful. So Daisy is very sweet and she is very faithful, okay? Their family has a lot of good values, okay? And they're very respectable. And the point is, the dog is just like that, okay? So the dog has good values, the dog is respectable, and uh, yeah, sounds like Daisy is a wonderful dog. All right, moving on. Now Peter says, you can see that in the dog. Now he's asking this question because Rachel is talking about all the good values the dog has. So he says, you can see that in the dog. Hmm, you can tell that, you can see that in the dog. That is amazing. I guess because they spend all day with one another. They spend all day together, in other words. Their personality traits, hmm, they kind of rub off on each other. Now, rub off here means to become very similar, to become like something or especially like somebody. Because, for example, if you spend a lot of time with your guy friends, then that'll rub off on you and you will most likely become like a boy if you're a girl. So even dogs and cats, since they spend so much time with you, they will become like you. So you can say, since they spend all day with one another, their personality traits, they kind of rub off on each other. Their personality becomes very similar. Now, Rachel says, I think that personality can be contagious. We take a look at that word in the past. What is contagious? It means easily spreading. A virus can be contagious. The flu is contagious because it can spread from one person to another to another. If something spreads easily, you can say it is contagious. And I think personality can be contagious as well. So, she says, I think personality can be contagious. Like when you are with your friends, here's an example, when you're with your friends, you end up being very similar, okay? Friends become very similar with each other or to each other. And I think it's the same thing with pets. That's right. This may sound complicated, 
right? Because these sentences are quite long. But simply put, she's saying, you know, like what, when you're with your friends, friends become like one another. You see the same things, you act the same way, you speak the same way. So she's saying, yeah, even pets can become very similar to their owners. There has got to be some part of the dog's character, another way of saying personality, that rubs off once again on humans. I think so too. And then here is an example. Maybe they're really clingy, okay, and warm to each other. So maybe people become like that as well. What is clingy? The word here we have is clingy, C-L-I-N-G-Y. It's not clingy, it's clingy, N-G, N sound, clingy. A child, say for example, a baby can be clingy, a girl can be clingy, a guy can be clingy, even dogs and cats can be clingy. It means that they cling on to you. They hold on to you all the time. They have to be with you all the time. And if you're not with them, they whine and they cry, okay? So they can be clingy and warm to each other and their owners become like that too. So this is just another way that he's putting that um, owners and pets become very much like each other, okay? Now, Rachel says, I think it's the question of what came first or what comes first, the chicken or the egg. I think even in Korean, we say 달걀이 먼저냐, 닭이 먼저냐. And we say that <laughs> in this way, the chicken or the egg. The question of what comes first. So what comes first? The chicken or the egg? The egg? The chicken? No one knows. Anyhow, I think it's the same thing. I'm pretty sure that companionship is beneficial to both. Let's take a look at the sentence. Companionship. It means fellowship. Okay? A relationship between people, a relationship with people. Fellowship, once again, is beneficial to both. Beneficial meaning that it benefits both A and B. Okay, so companionship is very important. Relationships, close relationships are very beneficial or helpful to each other or even to both. Okay, and then let's move on. Now, Peter says, sometimes the personality of the pet and the family doesn't match up. They are not the same. They are very different. If you say that something such as A or B matches up, they match up, meet at the same point, they are exactly the same or they go well together. But sometimes the personality of the pet and the family, mm, it doesn't match up. Okay, they don't blend well or mix well, and that's where maybe they get rid of. Get rid of the pet. Get rid of means what? Get rid of something means to throw away, to abandon. It's true that many pets, mm, they get abandoned. Their pet owners, yeah, they give them away, they just abandon them. So you can say, yeah. If personalities don't match up well, well, some pet owners will get rid of the pet. They'll get rid of them, give them away or abandon them. Now, Rachel says, pets, dogs, and cats, they are very human-like. Human-like is what? Very much like a person, very much like a human being. They're human-like. They're just like people. That's why you have to choose the right dog or the right pet that matches you and your family. So here we're talking about choosing, right? Picking, selecting, right? Making your pick, choosing. Uh, the right dog or right pet. Now I have circled right here. Now right does not necessarily mean correct in this case. We're talking about compatibility, whether you go well together whether you will get along well together. So I think it's true. That's why you have to choose the right dog or the right pet that matches you or that matches your personality. 
You need to be very careful. And then she asks, are you looking for a dog? Well, what was Peter's answer? He said, oh, no way. And that was the end of the conversation. Take a listen to it one more time. Rachel, do you believe that pets take after their owners or owners take after their pets? <laughs> I think it goes both ways. I think so, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, my good family friend, they have a dog, and her dog is just like their family members. Really? Yeah. like she's, like another child. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely see the dog. Her dog's name is Daisy, and right. she is definitely like another child. Wow. Her, She has such a sweet demeanor, and she's very obedient as well. <laughs> yeah, not that saying that the family is like super <laughs> obedient, but you can tell that um, the family has a lot of good values, and they're very respectable, and the dog is just like that. You can see that in the dog. You can see that in the dog. That's amazing. Yeah. I guess because they spend like all day with one another. Yeah. The personality traits, they kind of rub off on each exactly. other. Exactly. And I think that personality can be very contagious as well. Sure. You know, like with the, when you're with your friends, uh, you end up kind of being very similar. And I think it's the same thing with pets and with families. Yeah. But I wonder, like you said, it probably works both ways. So do some dog traits rub off onto humans? Like, I don't know, are they... Perhaps running around on all fours and barking. <laughs> maybe, maybe not that far. Maybe not that far, but I'm pretty sure it works both ways too. Sure, there's got to be some part of that character of the dog that rubs off on humans. Like maybe they're, they're really uh, clingy and warm to each other. So yeah. maybe the people become like that as well. Right. I think it's the question of what came first, like the rooster or the egg, <laughs> or the chicken or the egg, right? And I think sure. it's the same thing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure um, that companionship is beneficial to both. Yeah. Where the personalities rub off on both ends. Sure, and I think sometimes the personality of the pet and the family maybe doesn't match up, and that's where you get like a bad relationship, and maybe they get rid of the pet or something yeah. like that. I think you've got to find the, the right character as well. I agree. Not just the right breed or the right animal. Right? Yeah, exactly. Which shows that pets, dogs, cats, they're very human like as well. You know, sure. that they have those different personalities. Um, where people can relate to. And yeah. like you said, that's why you have to choose the right dog or right pet that matches you and your family. Sure. Yeah. So, are you looking for a dog? No way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, welcome back everyone. It's now time for actual expressions. Let's begin with some vocab, all right, and some phrases. The first word we have for you is demeanor. Demeanor. Okay, the stress, as you say, goes on the second syllable, and it means what? Behavior, attitude, or even poise. These are some synonyms, okay? So, moving on to the next word is obedient. I did mention that obedient means obeying or faithful and respectful as well. I would say when you want to talk about a pet of yours, like a dog or a cat, and especially when talking about their personality, you can say they are obedient. They are very obeying and faithful as well. What about to rub off on someone? Rub off on someone. Now, rub off, the stress goes on the second syllable. So, let me make it clear once again. To rub off on someone means to make very similar. Now, somebody's attitude or personality can have an effect on other person. So, let's say, for example, you are with a very negative person, a friend that has a very negative attitude. His or her negativity can rub off on you, meaning, yes, you will in the end, as a result, end up being negative as well, okay? So rub off on someone means to make very similar, okay? And we have companionship. Companionship stress goes right there. Companionship, companionship, and a synonym is togetherness, okay? Or fellowship, okay? Let's move on to some patterns then. Now, take after somebody. We're talking about pets, personalities, uh, and pet owners' personalities. So if you take after someone, you are becoming very similar with that person or similar to that person. I take after my mother in many ways. I take after my mother in many ways. I'm sure you take after your mother or father in many ways. So this means I am very much like my mother in many ways. Okay, let's practice it one more time. 
I take after my mother in many ways. This can be personality wise, also appearance wise. Keep that in mind. Another sentence is I think my dog takes after me. So this means what? My dog has become very much like me. My dog and I are very similar. Okay? I think my dog takes after me. I think my dog takes after me. Moving on to our next pattern, someone or something is just like something or someone. Okay, here is a sample sentence. My brother is just like my dad. Simple, right? My brother is just like my dad. But here is something I do want to point out just like. You can take that out and say, My brother is like my dad. 아빠하고 남동생 혹은 오빠가 정말 똑같다라는 말이죠. But if you add just, you are stressing that. My brother and my father are very much alike. My brother is just like my dad. 딱 우리 아빠 같다라는 말이에요. So keep that in mind. Another one is, our cat is just like a dog. Our cat is just like a dog. She is so sweet. Dogs tend to be very sweet. Dogs, I think, are sweeter than cats. That's what people say, but cats can be really, really sweet. They can be just like dogs. Okay, moving on to uh, our final pattern. It is can see something in something or someone. This is what Peter said. He said, You can see that in a dog, right? Okay, here is a sample sentence. You can see so much love in. My family. Now, this does not mean that you are actually seeing things with your own eyes. It can also mean that you experienced something, you felt something, you realized something, not only saw something, but actually, yeah, you can feel something. So, you can see so much love in my family, meaning my family is so loving. And one final sentence. I can see pain in her eyes. In this case, I would say yes, it's very physical. You can actually feel the pain in her eyes. You can see her eyes, and if somebody's eyes look very, very sad, you can say, I can see pain in her eyes. I understand, I realize, I can feel that she is feeling a lot of pain. Two more times, I can see pain in her eyes. I can see pain in her eyes. Good job, everyone. That is a wrap. Hi, my name is Jonas, and、uh, I'm from France. And when I was living in France, I used to have two cats the mother and the daughter.、Uh, that was really nice. I really enjoyed actually living with cats because、uh, at that time I was reading a lot. So it's always nice when you are reading to have like.、Uh, One of the cats coming to you and want to be cuddled and stuff, and、uh, it feels like you get some attention from the cat and they like you, so it,、uh, it's always enjoyable. And、uh, I'm not sure it tells that much about my personality, as actually it was more like、uh, my parents' decision to get some pets for the kids. But、uh, no, it was a really, really nice experience.、Uh, however, right now、uh, I wouldn't take cat by myself, because when you live alone, it's,、uh, it's a bit of a burden. As when the cat grows older, you have to take care of them and you know, all, the, all those things. So I was glad my parents did that for me. And、uh, yeah, when they grow, grow really old, like cats,、uh, it's a lot of,、uh, there is a lot of things to take care of with them. Thank you, Jonas. That was Jonas from France. And he's told us about his experience of raising cats when he was a lot younger or perhaps in the past. But、uh, he would not raise a cat now because he thinks it could be a burden. But we asked him, Have you ever raised pets and what kind of similarities、uh, do you have or did you have? He mentioned something very briefly about their、uh, similarities, but let's check out what he mentioned, okay? I have selected five sentences from today's actual story. He tells us by saying, When I lived in France. Lived in France. So we can tell this is. In the past, I used to, not anymore, I used to have two cats. All right, so now we know he's going to be talking about the two cats he had when he lived in France. It's always nice when you are reading. Aha,、uh-huh. 
What's nice when you're reading? To have the cats coming to you and wanting to cuddle. Okay, I think it's very nice too, especially when you're reading. You need some peace and quiet. You want to relax, right? And when you're reading, it's nice to have cats just coming to you very slowly and purring and wanting to cuddle and、uh, be with you. So that's what he's talking about. Coming to you—that's very easy. They come to you, but wanting to cuddle. What does cuddle mean? People can cuddle. Animals can cuddle. A cat can cuddle. You can cuddle with a dog or a cat as well. It means to hug each other, to hold each other. Okay, very warm and sweet. Just hold on to each other comfortably. So he's talking about how nice it is to have cats coming to want to cuddle with you. What about this? It feels like you're getting attention from the cat. Hmm. He's talking about how nice it feels when the cat comes to you and wants to cuddle with you. It feels like you're getting attention from the cat. The cat is giving you attention, definitely. I'm not sure it tells that much about what my personality. Hmm. He's talking about how he's not sure it tells that much about my personality. He's talking about his experience with his two cats. So he's not sure whether to say that him and his cats are very similar. Anyhow, he does say. However, right now I wouldn't raise a cat.、Hmm. Why? Because when you live alone, they could be a bit of a burden. Now, if you say that something is a burden, it's kind of negative. It has a negative connotation. But I guess you can say this: when you live alone, pets can be a burden because raising pets is a huge responsibility. You really have to take care of them. So that is what he's saying. Right now, I wouldn't raise a cat because when you live alone, yeah, they could be a little bit of a burden. Thank you so much for sharing, Jonas. Have a listen one more time. Hi, my name is Jonas, and、uh, I'm from France. And when I was living in France, I used to have two cats, the mother and the daughter.、Uh, that was really nice. I really enjoyed actually living with cats because、uh, at that time I was reading a lot. So it's always nice when you are reading to have like、uh, one of the cats coming to you and want to be cuddled and stuff. And、uh, it feels like you get some attention from the cat, and they like you. So it's always enjoyable. And、uh, I'm not sure it tells that much about my personality, as actually it was more like、uh, my parents' decision to get some pets for the kids. But、uh, no, it was a really, really nice experience.、Uh, however, right now、uh, I wouldn't take cat by myself because when you live alone, it's、uh, it's a bit of a burden. As when the cat go older, you have to take care of them, and you know all those, all those things. So I was glad my parents did that for me. And、uh, yeah, when they go grow really old, like cats,、uh, it's a lot of. There is a lot of things to take care of with them. I've realized that most pet owners say that as their dogs or their cats they age and become older, they become very much like them, the pet owners. And I would have to say I have a dog that's ten years old. She's getting old,、uh, but yes, she. Is very similar with me. She's very much like me, and my mother actually. Why? Because we spent so much time together. Anyhow, I hope you had a good time with us today as we talked about your pets and your personality. Next time, let's talk about this topic: cat person versus dog person. Don't be confused. I'll tell you what this actually means. But join me again next time.、Uh, in the meantime, come to our homepage. Find your way over to www.ebse.co.kr. Look for Actual English with me, Jennifer Clyde. And remember to swing by, even to say hello. And even better, if you have any topics in mind, please do let me know. I'll try my best to prepare some lectures on them. Okay, have a wonderful day. I'll catch you again next time. Bye, everyone.